Last episode, I was worried I was going to get a sack. Well, since then, we have, we have the best form in the whole league. Yes, hello, welcome to Eleven Sports here for another episode of Glory Hunt. And if you're new around here, hit that subscribe button for more daily football manager content. And if you missed the last one, go and check it out. We played against Real Madrid. That was pretty good. Today we play against Barcelona. Also good. What's also been really good since we last met is this. Look at the form we last met just around about here. We played against Real Madrid. And look at that, we've worked our way all the way up and we're now in 8th position, the highest we've been in our whole tenure. If we look back to where we joined the club, it was over here, we were down in 12th. We won a couple of games, we thought, oh this is easy. You know, we did well, got up to 9th and then we had a really poor run of form, dropped all the way down to 14th after that 1-0 draw with Real Madrid. We're now all the way up to 8th position. If we have a look, that's not what I wanted to do. If we have a look at the, the league table at this moment in time, we're in 8th. 45 points, just one point off Valencia, who are in the European places. Very exciting indeed. One point off Bilbao, who are in sixth as well. Look, just four points off Sevilla, who are in fifth. And dare I say, just seven points off of Atletico Madrid, who are in the Champions League places. You never know. Look at that form on the right-hand side. Only ourselves and Real Madrid have got five wins in the last five and remember the last time Real Madrid dropped points in the league it was against us a one-all draw we're doing pretty well I must I must say I'm, I'm impressed with how we're doing we have turned the turned the tide turned the thing around turned the ship I don't know what the phrase is but the change of formation has certainly worked obviously in the last episode I was talking about want to play this kind of five at the back sort of formation and we have been doing that I'm not sure if this is the team we're going to play today so don't worry about it but uh, we, uh, we're playing this five at the back formation. Two, one, two as the attacking five players. And it's working really well, I must say. Lots of goals from the front three, particularly Pacheco again in that attacking midfield position. He's really getting through the lines. We've made Chuck Wazy uh, sit a little bit wider. I can't remember if I mentioned that in the last episode. But I gave him an additional instruction to stay wider. So he moves out to that right-hand side to create some space for Pacheco to run through as Moreno drops a little bit deeper. It works really, really well for us. And yeah, we're, uh, we're playing well. And we also managed to get through in the Europa League as well. We beat Basel 4-1 in the first leg of that game. Lost one now in the second leg, but it really didn't matter. It was the 90th minute. The, the game was by. The tie was by. We then drew uh, by our Leverkusen in the second knockout round. We drew with them one all in the first leg, a game that we kind of dominated, but we didn't put to bed. We got a goal late on to get an equaliser in that one. And we will play that second leg as our first game today before we get into the Barcelona game. Yeah, we could get through to the quarterfinals of the Europa League. Not bad for a team who uh, was struggling really badly at the start of this season. You can see the game since we last played. We obviously played Madrid and Osasuna. We then beat... Bottom of the league, Malaga 5-2. They just scored a 92nd minute goal, so it was more comfortable than it looked. Chuck Wazy with a hat-trick, Pacheco and Berg with goals in that one. I see we had that 4-1 win against Basel. We followed that up with a 5-0 win against Alaves, just destroying teams who were below us in the table. We then played another win against Laganes, another 4-1 victory. It was two very late goals for Chuck Wazy in that one, 91st and 95th minute. We then played Bilbao, who you can see are above us in the league table. We beat them 2-1. A good victory for us there. Two goals for Moreno. Obviously, I mentioned that draw against Bar Leverkusen. Then we beat Valencia 4-2. Remember, they put us out the Spanish Cup earlier in the, the year. They beat us 2-1 in that one. Well, Quinton scored himself three goals. You remember the young striker we signed from Colombia, I'm sure it is, isn't it? Colombia? Yes, the young 18-year-old Colombian striker got himself three goals in that one. He's now got five in all. And uh, Paco Alcacer also got one in that one. Guedes did get two late ones, which made me a bit worried before Quentin got his third, but we did beat them 4-2. And as you can see, Valencia in seventh, Bilbao in sixth, two teams above us because of those two wins. We are right up on their tail. We've had a chance to overtake them because look at our goal difference. When we lose, we only lose by a goal, basically, apart from when we played against Barcelona and Real Madrid in the past. But when we win, we're having some big wins. 4-2, 5-0, 5-2, 3-0, 4-1. 
goal difference is pretty good. So if we can get up in and out of these teams, we're probably going to have the better goal difference. And I know it's a long way away, but look, Atletico Madrid in fourth, seven points ahead, nine games to go. Can we do it? Who knows? All I know is we do play Atletico Madrid at some point, and we'll probably show you that one, because that could be a way that we get into the Champions League places. And we do have a fairly easy run in, minus Atletico Madrid and Real Sociedad, obviously, who are both in Champions League places at the moment, and obviously Barcelona today. But aside from those games, it's all teams that are kind of below us. So if we look for four, five, maybe if we get six wins somehow out of those games, would that be enough to get Champions League football? I don't imagine Atletico would drop that many points, but you never know what could happen. But anyway, let's get into today's game, which is the second leg against Leverkusen. We drew the first one, one all. We just need to make sure to win this one. And we're through to the next round of the Europa League. That could be very exciting indeed. Let's get into it. Let's show you the team we're going to use. I meant to show you the other teams that are in. Remember I said that we were one of the favourites. I didn't see who uh, won all the Europa League groups. Juventus are in here. Liverpool are in here. AC Milan are in here. Chelsea are in here. Yeah, there's some good teams in there. To be fair, Liverpool are losing to PSV at the stage. Juventus are losing to Fan or at this stage as well. Never know, some of them might get knocked out, but I wouldn't say we are the favourites. Definitely not. Berg has been returning from injury, so we're still going to not play him. He's going to go on the bench today, which means the team's kind of shuffled about a little bit, but I think it's shuffled into a way that it's going to stay, if that makes any sense. We've moved Zinchenko and he's been playing in central midfield and he's been playing very well in central midfield. You can see he's averaging over a seven average rate when he plays there. Doesn't play as well on the left-hand side. So we're going to keep Manu Sanchez out there and try and get the best of Zinchenko in the middle and then probably get another left back in at some point in the summer, maybe. But for the moment, I'm happy with what we've got, but Zinchenko's going to play in the middle and he plays particularly well there. Playing as that box-to-box -box on the right-hand side of the midfield when he cuts inside and he's left, very dangerous. But anyway, this is the team for the game today and it should be good enough to get us through against Leverkusen. We dominated last time round, just didn't finish our chances really, so hopefully we can dominate again. Really in goal, Torres, Cuenta and Foyt at the back. Ahrens and Sanchez as the, the wide players. Zinchenko alongside Morlanes in midfield. Pacheco ahead of them. Moreno and Chocuese up front. I feel kind of bad that we've not registered Quinton after he got his hat-trick in his last game, but oh well, he can be registered next year. Something I'm just going to have to remember, isn't it? Don't sign lots of people in January because you can't register them for Europe. You can only make three changes, which is, uh, yeah, not great when you sign so many players like I did in January to turn the team around. The positive, though, is it has turned the team around. We're starting to improve and there's a chance we could get uh, we could get into Europe, which would be outstanding seeing how far behind we were when we joined the club. Remember, eight points behind the European places now. We are just one off. And we will be out there in our yellow today against Leverkusen. Can we go and do it? Let's find out. Throw in for us on the right-hand side. There's been no shots in the game yet. Zinchenko into the box and Horn holds on to it. Gerard Moreno nearly got his head onto the end of it. As Horn, I'm sure, will launch this one clear. I don't imagine he's going to roll that out. No, he's not. He kicks it long. And Torres holds on to it. Cuenza. Morlan is playing that playmaker role all the way back to Rulli. And now Cuenza with it. Four to Sanchez. Can he get it forward to Moreno? He does indeed. Gerard Moreno. Back to Morlanes. And it's Coenza with it. And he comes forward now. Finds Pacheco. Forward to Chukwesi. Can he finish? It's off the post. What an effort from him. And it's just about clear away. But Sanchez has it again. Into Gerard Moreno. Back to Sanchez. Zinchenko heads it. And it's kept out by Horn. Double chance for us there. And it's just about stayed out that Bayer Leverkusen goal. That was exciting indeed. I think Vauber plays at centre-back for Leverkusen. Who we manage in... As, a, as Austria manager, remember, you'll get to see the World Cup in just a few episodes' time as all of our players, apart from our keeper, are in the Leverkusen half here. Foyt out to Aaron's just in acres of space. Zinchenko, Chugwezi into Pacheco, who hit it. What a save from Horn. Goodness me, he's keeping Leverkusen in this game at this moment in time as we've got a corner ball. Pacheco swings it into the back post. Chugwezi heads it over. And how are we not ahead? Throw in for Leverkusen. This could be their first highlight. Francis into Motika. Back to Francis now. He puts the ball in the middle. And we've just about kept it out, but they've got the ball back. Haaland, Francis, and Coenza launches the ball away. And we, the highlight ends. I thought there would be something a bit more interesting than that, but I, I'm glad Leverkusen's first highlight didn't result in a goal for them. Well, we have 
at least in terms of the highlights we got to be able to see dominate this first half, maybe not so much statistically, but goodness me, we should be ahead. We've had so many great chances. Go and put on a show, I'll say to them, as we continue this second half, and surely there's a goal coming. Surely. The ball on the right-hand side here for Leverkusen. Haaland plays it into Ramos. It's headed over the bar. There's half an hour to go in the game. We're going to make a first change. Moreno's not playing well. We'll bring on Alcacer to play for him. Looking further back, there's a few yellow cards at the back, but we'll keep them on and we'll just make sure they don't get themselves sent off as we have a highlight straight from the goal kick here. And Alcacer is on the field now. Merlanes finds Pacheco. Back to Alcacer, his first touch of the game. Sanchez into toward Chuck Wazy, but it finds its way to Ahrens. And Chuck Wazy through to Alcacer. It's off the post and in. Goodness me, just seconds after coming onto the field. Alcacer gets himself on the score sheet. Wow, that was his second touch of the game. He had one in the build-up play back here. And then he made his way into the box. And his second touch of the game's a goal off the inside of the post and in. 1-0, that substitution, perfectly timed, Chuck Wazy assisting Alcacer, and we lead 1-0, and I'm going to encourage the team, saying, well done boys, that's great, and hopefully they can hold on for the next 20 minutes, maybe even get a second, Pacheco, Aaron, Zinchenko now, it'll come across toward Cuenza, and Alcacer, can he get himself a second goal? No, Aaron's back to Foyt, and back to Aaron, can he get by his man, he's got the pace to go down the line if he wanted to, Plays it to Zinchenko, into Pacheco, who hits it just wide of the goal. Morlanes has come off for Suarez in midfield, and there's just 15 minutes on the clock. Leverkusen with the ball here. Nice play from them on their left-hand side. Vasquez with it into Haaland. Forward toward Kawakami and Ramos, and it's over now to Motika. And there's no overlap, but he comes in field. Diaby hits it from a long way out. It's off the top of the bar. 15 minutes to go and Leverkusen are knocking at the door here to get an equaliser. At this rate, we're going through though, remember. Zinchenko's tired. We'll bring on Berg for the last five minutes after his injury. Can we hold on? Let's find out. One more chance for Leverkusen. Ball in the middle. Aaron's clears it away. Chuck Wazy. Alcacer was open and he played it all the way back. Oh, goodness me. We had a chance there. But Pacheco's found Chuck Wazy. He's in behind the defence. Can he finish? He can. It's two. And we've got ourselves that second goal. We're ahead 2-0. 3-1 in aggregate. We're going through. And I thought the chance was over. But we managed to create something different here. I'll okay, see. I threw to Pacheco. And Chuck Wazy's pacing behind the defence. Outstanding. Gets onto it. Tucks on the bottom corner. And, um, yeah. We're lead 2-0. And now I'm going to be going to my mentality and going very defensive and going instructions and going time wasting frequently and we're going to play a much lower tempo thank you very much shutting up shop four minutes out of time you ain't going to get through Leverkusen we are going to win this game maybe not 2-0 if you get a chance here but you're certainly not going to be able to come back as we've managed to win this game what a performance from the boys as Leverkusen knock at the door to try and get a goal wow what an effort from the, the region who's there playing at attacking midfield Kawakami, was that his name, something like that but uh, we're going to just about hold on Kawakami yes, I'll need to have a look at him and see if uh, how good he is, maybe see if we can sign him, if we have any money, but it doesn't matter we've won 2-0 on the night, we're through to the quarterfinals of the Europa League we need to check this one off the, the list can we do it with this Villarreal team, I never thought it would be, bear in mind we failed several times with our Roma side can we do it with Villarreal Let's let's find out. We'll find out in the next episode as we progress through. But the draw shouldn't be too far away. And we'll see who we can draw in that. Who's got through? Juventus got through after extra time. Liverpool destroyed PSV in the second leg to get through. As did AC Milan beating Lille. So we thought it might be a little bit easier for us. Not going to be the case. AC Milan and Liverpool and Juventus through. And the draws happened. I'm sure it didn't. The draw must have happened before. They do that, don't they, for the Europa League? They tell you who you're going to get if you beat whoever. Yeah. Anyway, we've drawn Porto, which um, I don't know if that's one of the easier options. Let's see who we could have had. We could have Chelsea, Hertha, Rangers, Porto, AC, Liverpool, Juventus. Well, it's certainly easier than those four teams there. So it's probably one of the easier options. If you weren't going to get Rangers or Hertha Berlin, I think you probably wanted Portugal, even though that is a tough game. Who did everyone get? Hertha played Juventus, Liverpool played Chelsea, and Rangers play AC Milan. And if I remember rightly, the draw has already been done. So if we look at the stages and go to semi-final, we can see 
we would play the winner of Liverpool or Chelsea in the next round should we get through. That's going to be pretty difficult. But we have to get through Porto before that. And more importantly, today's episode, we have to get through Barcelona first. So Barcelona in three days' time. Hopefully the squad have recovered for that. And we'll see for that one just shortly. I was just looking at the available jobs and Leicester have sacked their manager. If you look at how they've done in recent years, they've been, what, fifth, fourth, eighth, sixth, seventh. They're now down in 11th position in the Premier League. You can see down there on 37 points. Not going to get European football this year. Uh, however, the leading candidate, Steve Bruce, who's apparently at Bournemouth in this game, or Bournemouth... And Bournemouth are in the... Pre the world's gone mad. Only reason I was looking at it is I thought that could be an interesting team to go to to try and get a good result in England, but it's probably not one of the ones you want, is it? And I think we could do something fairly special here at Villarreal with the right back in over the next few years, I think. Two or three years, I think we could probably, probably get the title. Maybe I'm being far too confident there, but the way we've been playing recently, we're, we're, we're certainly very close to getting to be a, a top four side. And once you get that, you get Champions League money and then you can uh, you can push for the title. I know it's going to be hard against Barcelona and Real Madrid, two of the, the big boys in the league here, but maybe we could do it. Who knows? I don't want to move to Leicester. I've only been here six months. Maybe in the summer, if a better job turns up. And I wouldn't want to take the Leicester job from Steve Bruce with a... What a crazy, crazy world. Anyway, Barcelona games in a couple of days. I'll see you for that one. Strangely, Barcelona aren't odds-on favourite for this game. To be honest, they're 5-4 to four according to the bookie and we are 2-1. to one. So that's um, interesting. I thought Barcelona would be bigger favourites than that, to be honest. Well, that's going to be interesting. Valencia drew their game earlier on today. So a win for us takes us definitely into the European places. And depending how Bilbao got on against 17th placed Granada could go up as high as 6th. Sevilla are also losing at the moment to 12th place Cadiz, so if that continues, it'll be very, very tight for those at European places. And looking at Atletico Madrid, they're away to Real uh, Betis as well, who are just below us, so that could be a tight game for them. You never know, we might be getting up toward that last Champions League place. That would be crazy if we managed to get that after the way we started here at uh, Villarreal. We started off quite poorly, and we might be able to get Champions League football. That would be, that'd be amazing. But anyway, let's concentrate on this challenge that is Barcelona. Well, frustratingly, we've got a lot of fitness concerns, so we've almost completely rotated a lot of the team here. Um, really, is going to play in goal. Torres is at the back alongside Coenza and Milenkovic is going to play instead of Foyt at the centre back. Aaron's on the right back position. Zinchenko's going to go back out to left wing back because Sanchez is. Very, very tired, and Zajeko slightly less tired. Means that Bear's going to come back in, even though he's got some fitness issues, alongside Suarez in midfield. Remember the man we paid quite a lot of money for, so he's going to play. Uh, Velasco's going to play in the attacking midfield role because of Pacheco's uh, fitness struggles. Uh, Chugwez is a little bit struggling for some match conditioning, I suppose technically it's called. So Alcacer's going to come in for him after he scored a goal. And Quentin, after his hat-trick in the last league game that you didn't get to see, he's going to play for us. Especially seen as Moreno has um has not played well the last couple of games, so he's going to take a little bit of a rest, and uh, we're going to play Quentin up front alongside Alcacer. A bit of a rotated side for the last game, but still, as you can see, a fairly strong team. So let's see how we get on. And we're playing against a Barcelona side. It's got what Eric Garcia, Rajo Ibanez, uh, Andy Robertson playing in there. Rodri, Frankie De Jong, Pedri, Trincao, Fati, and Depay. Pai's still leading the line there, at uh, whatever age he is at the moment. Osmond Dembele on the bench, Ferran Torres, Nelson Semedo. They get some pretty good players there. Can we compete with them? I hope so, but let's find out. Uh, go and put on a worthy display. They seem motivated by that. We have won our last five league games. They've won three, drawn two. Hopefully, we can make this one another win for us. It'd be pretty amazing if we could against a very, very good Barcelona side. And let's see what can happen here. As we appear to have a free kick early on. Zinchenko for about 25 yards out off the underside of the bar. What an effort from Zinchenko. I must say that's one thing I didn't quite realise he was as good at was taking free kicks. 
We've had a couple of great free kicks goals from him so far this season. This Pedri nearly curled one in there as I was talking about free kicks. Yeah, Zinchenko's had some great free kicks and some some have been very, very close to going in and some have indeed gone in. Some outstanding free kicks from him. But Barcelona have the ball here 15 minutes in and they've worked their way forwards. Memphis back to De Jong. It's out towards Ansu Fati there. And Pedri with it. Out to Robertson. He's a bit older now, but he's still brilliant in that left-back position. The ball swung in towards Trincao at the back post, and Memphis tucks it in. And they've won a 1-0, and I don't see anywhere where there was an offside. So we're going to say it was offside and ignore VAR, but they will go and check it anyway. And it has been awarded, because of course it was onside, and we're 15 minutes into this game. And Barcelona are up 1-0. Robertson with a good ball in, Trincao with a header, and Memphis obviously onside, tucks that one in. And 1-0 down early on. Really has the ball here for us in our own box. Let's see how we progress the ball. We throw it out to Milenkovic. And he finds Ahrens. And back to Milenkovic. And now Berg. And Ahrens with it. Launches it forward toward Alcacer. But Araujo intercepts. The ball's launched long. Memphis goes up for the header and wins it. And Ansu Fati's in behind the defence here. He hits it. Good save from Rulli. And that's probably the end of the highlight. Indeed it is. Looking around the grounds, it looks like Atletico are drawn at the moment, and it looks like Bilbao are drawn at the moment as well. Oh, if we could have just managed to get a positive result here, we could have jumped both of them, but it doesn't look like that's going to be the case as we get into half time. It's been a fairly poor game in terms of XG, and we're uh, we're down 1 0. Show me something else in the second half. They seem motivated. I won't make any changes yet, but there's some poor performances out there. I mean, maybe we'll have to make some changes. Trincao with it. Back to Garcia and Frankie de Jong. And Rodri launches it forward to Garcia and to Fati. It's off the base of the post. We've been saved by the post there. And Barcelona nearly go ahead early on. Look at that. Atletico Madrid up 1-0 now. But Bauer ahead and Sevilla are, uh, are down 2-0 against Cadiz, it looks like. Suarez finds Ahrens forward to Alcacer and Quinton. And back toward Ahrens. Fati intercepts, but not for very long. Berg, Alcacer... Aaron to kind of get by Robertson. He tries. Back to Alcacer into Berg. Well, he had it. He does. And it's come off the defender. And the goalkeeper ends up holding on to the ball. This is going to be a chance for Barcelona. They launch it long. And Ansu Fati's in behind the defence here. He comes out to the wing. Switches the play to Trincao. Into Pedri. And Memphis. And wonderful football. The flag hasn't gone up. I think it's going to be 2-0. And this could be game over. The way that Barcelona are playing compared to us. Outstanding play from them there. But the goal's been disallowed, so it's only 1-0. He must have been offside. Let's see this replay. How close it... Oh, that was close. But we'll take it, and there's an hour on the clock. And you know what? We're going to have to make some changes because there's some tired legs. And Zinchenko's in a 6.1. Right, we're doing some interesting tactical stuff here. We're making a triple change after 57 minutes, and we're changing the formation. We don't have any backup left back on the bench because Sanchez is too tired to do anything, so... We've had to bring on Foyt, and we'll move him to centre-back. We're going to move Coenza to the left wing-back, but drop him back to play as a no-nonsense full-back, so he won't get forward there. Cardstops come on for Ahrens on the right, because Ahrens is dead on his feet. And Berg struggling in the middle, so we brought on Pacheco for him. We're going to focus play down the right, as Coenza can just sit back and defend on that side. Let's hope Cardstop can swing a ball into the box in the last half an hour of the game. That's all we have to rely on, I'm afraid. Corner ball for Barcelona here. Robertson into the box. Punched away by Rulli. Only as far as Fatty though. And Robertson. Can he hit the ball? Plays it to Trincao. It's bounced off the defender. And over the bar from De Jong there. 25 minutes ago. Barcelona really on the ascendancy here. Doesn't look like we're going to get a goal back. But we can still try. As we will move to an attacking mentality now. And we'll encourage the entire team. Let's see what happens. De Jong. Ball forward. We've intercepted it. And Alcacer has it. He goes down the right, finds Pacheco. He's in behind. Oh. One on one with the goalkeeper. You cannot afford to miss the target from that range. And the ball just trickled by the goalkeeper and by the outside of the goal. And they were still down 1 0 as Nelson Samedo plays it into Rodri. Can we win the ball back and perhaps go and get another one? Or is it going to be a chance for Barcelona to go 2 0 up here? I'm not even going to try and say his name as Cards up possibly gave away a foul there, but apparently didn't. Alcacer, forward to Quad Quentin, but Ibanez wins it. Is that the same Ibanez as we had at Roma? I'm going to have to pause this game and find out 
Is he the one we had at Roma? He was indeed, and we sold him to Colne, and then he went to Bayern, and then Barcelona, and he's played there 24 times this season. Well, I wasn't that impressed with him at Roma, so hopefully we can put some pressure on him and try and cause a mistake. Talking about mistakes, we're in behind cars up here. Memphis, four to the man whose name I'm not going to try and pronounce, and it's a great save from Rulli, as there's just a couple of minutes to go. Well, not even a couple of minutes, 20 seconds to go. Robertson with the corner ball, swung in. It's cleared away by Milenkovic. And can we win the ball back and break away? Trincao down this left-hand side. Good challenge from Alcacer. That looks like it's going to be the end of the game, though. And we've lost 1-0 to Barcelona. And a game that probably we deserve to lose by more by. But we could have managed to sneak a draw. We've had a couple of good chances we should really have put away. And it's disappointing that we didn't. Probably a fair result, to be honest, a 1-0 to Barcelona, especially when you look at the XG and you look at how much they dominated the game. I feel as if we could have snuck something. No one played well, so I suppose I can't be surprised. I just feel as if maybe we could have stolen something from the game. Disappointing. And it means the league table looks like that. We're still just four points off of Sevilla, but Atletico Madrid have pulled away. I don't think Champions League football is happening, but definitely Europa League. And possibly the Conference League if we get 7th, you know. Maybe that's the way to go and try and win the Conference League with this team. Who knows? Um, but yeah, European football is certainly still a possibility. There's a lot of teams that could get into Europe, to be honest. But hopefully one of those is us. If we can get the form going again. Obviously we dropped a game here against Barcelona. But hopefully we play slightly easier sides. If we can get those uh, winning ways back. And that feels like a good episode. Atletico Madrid, who are currently in 4th position... And the first leg of that Europa League quarter-final against Porto. They're two big games, two tough games. And let's see how we do in those ones. So that's going to be the next episode. The game against Atletico and the game against Porto. So if you have enjoyed this one, the 2-0 win against Leverkusen, the 1-0 defeat to Barcelona, please do leave a like on the video. It really does help us out. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And until that next one against Atletico and Porto, we'll see you then.